Guys, come on, follow me. Hop in. What's up, gentlemen? So today, a little old school Alpha M etiquette tutorial. We're talking about some auto do's and don'ts. When you own a car, when you drive a car, but also when you're a passenger in the car, there are some rules that I feel like every single one of you should follow. I'm gonna park so I don't actually drive distracted, which is the first rule, don't drive distracted. Now, I'm not gonna talk a lot about this, but a few things you should know at this point, don't text and drive, right? And it's not even that you're not able to multitask, it's about how quickly something could happen, and if you're distracted for a second looking at your phone, bang. Exactly, bang, not good. Now, something else, you shouldn't ever drink and drive. How do I know that? Because, well, I learned everything the hard way. I got a DUI years and years and years ago because I thought, oh, I'm fine. Guess what, I wasn't fine. Today, there is no excuse. With all the different ride share apps, if you're going out and you know there's gonna be alcohol, don't even take your car. Or if you get there and all of a sudden you're like, yo, some spicy senorita's chatting me up, I'm gonna have a few more cocktails, then you should definitely get a ride home, leave your car there, you can always get it tomorrow. All right, the other thing I wanna talk about real quick before we get started, which is actually rule number three, and that is don't drive a car you can't afford. Unfortunately, a lot of us nowadays get into the mindset of we gotta drive a super sexy car, whether or not you're seeing people on Instagram driving super badass cars, or you know you see badass cars and you're just like, damn, I want a badass car. Do not allow your ego to make a bad decision when it comes to your car, like I did, all right? So for me, tell you a little bit about my auto history. My first car I bought, I saved up for, I was 19 years old. All right, I didn't have mommy and daddy giving me a car. I had to actually buy one. It was $1,700. It was a 1984 Honda Accord hatchback. It was gray, it was stick shift, and it was amazing. I love that car because I bought it, and it was something that I could afford. It was paid off, and so I drove it until literally it fell apart. And then I got a car from my uncle. It was a teal blue Mercury Topaz. Definitely not sexy. Then my next car was the RAV4. Ooh, that was sexy. It was awesome. Something else was awesome was my next car, which was an Infiniti G35. I love that thing. You guys have all seen that. I had that for like 10 years and then I got it back. And then I let my ego take over, all right? Then I got an M4, I hated it. I got an M850i, I hated it. It was sexy, but I didn't like it. Then I got the X6 or the mom car, I liked it. But then I was like, yo, I want a cheaper payment and my ego was in check. And so I got what I'm driving now, which is the BMW 430i. I think, actually, I better, I better, I better check. Actually, it's an M440i, uh, yeah, I love it though. It's great because it's zippy, it's clean, it's sexy, and it looks good, and the payment is super affordable, and for me, that's really what it's about, all right? And as long as I keep that bitch clean, it's sexy as hell, and I dig it, which brings me to the next thing. Keep it clean, gentlemen. It doesn't matter what ride you're rolling in. If it's dirty, it sucks. If it's clean, it's awesome. What's not awesome, though, is parking like an asshole, which is what I just did, right? here because well I wanted to teach you a lesson here's the deal how do you park like an a-hole well a few things you don't actually take up one spot you park in multiple spots you park diagonally or handicap nothing says yo I have zero class and I'm a huge piece of shit like parking in a handicap spot if you don't have some type of physical ailment period end of story don't even hit me with your butt out no 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 something else that makes you look like a lazy piece of crap is having just a dirty car inside guys outside's one thing inside's another thing when your car is cluttered or dirty or you've got old sneakers or wrappers or just nasty crap or it's dusty and it's gross and it's got just like a film all over it it makes you look disgusting it makes you look lazy it no spicy senorita worth her spice is going to want to get sexy or freaky with you because you look like a huge lazy loser it also probably stinks which is the next thing you gotta stop and that is having a stinky ass car it doesn't matter if your car's not new it doesn't have to stink it can smell good and like smelling good isn't like those like pine tree like air fresheners that you hang from those things honestly are synthetic nightmares they also are overpowering and they just smell not good something else you shouldn't do is spray cologne in your car on you yes car no for breeze bad move instead what i recommend right here the only thing i use is this it's called drift all right drift, drift makes your car smell amazing because that's what they do 
It's so sexy. Guys, I wish literally you could smell this month's scent. It's called Cabana. All right, the way that it works, super simple. There's a link down below around here somewhere. You can scan that QR code. Use the code Alpha M to get 55% off your first month of Drift, all right? And it's very similar to Scentbird. When you sign up, you're gonna get this, all right? You're gonna get your first scent, but you're also gonna get this super sexy, sleek clip that basically just clips on your visor. And then when you get your Drift, it comes in a little pouch, open it up, take it out, right? It's got this little magnet, boom. You just clip it on. It's literally that simple. All of the ingredients they use to make the drift smell the way that it does are botanicals, they're essential oils, they're things that aren't gonna actually damage your car, damage your body, or smell super artificial and synthetic. Then in 30 days, Drift is gonna send you a new Drift freshener, all right? Because they recommend switching them out every 30 days in order to basically keep your car smelling as good as it possibly can. Or something else that they have is called the Scent of the Month Club, where each month they're gonna send you a different fragrance. The reason why this is pretty cool is that scent blindness is a thing. Over time, you're not gonna notice it as much as you did when you first got it. Bottom line, gentlemen, there's a link. There's also that QR code. If you scan it, use the discount code Alpha M. You're gonna get your first month for 55 percent off using the code alpha m or scanning that qr code that's on the screen guys and then regular price is literally like under ten dollars it's a huge fragrance car smelling no-brainer guys bottom line is this if you are ready for your car to smell better than her ex-boyfriend hit the link down below use that code alpha m and get yourself drift today. All right, gentlemen, so your car is clean inside and out. It also doesn't smell like your ass. Now we got to talk about you not driving like one because that's actually the next rule. Driving like an ass. What is driving like an ass? Few things. Tailgating, bad. Speeding, not great. Cutting people off, horrible idea. Giving people the bird, yelling at them, yo, F you, you suck, right, right? Gentlemen, here's the deal. Don't be stupid, stupid, because you don't know who's in the other car and who's got a gun. You literally never know who is in the other car and how like crazy they are. My buddy literally had somebody pull a gun on him after he like cut him off. Now, should my buddy have cut him off? No. Should this dude have pulled a gun? No, but it doesn't matter. You gotta be safe and you gotta drive like a gentleman. You also need to make sure you use your turn signal unless you have a BMW and then you actually don't have to use your turn signals <laughs> I'm kidding am I yes I'm kidding all right now here's the deal follow basic rules of the road this is pretty simple all right if you're merging merge like a zipper let them go you go if you come to a stoplight and it's not working right you take turns all the things you learn in driver's ed you got to still apply when you're a grown ass man if you see flashing lights like from an ambulance or an emergency vehicle pull over don't keep driving don't be that guy pull over Another thing that I do because it's respectful, if you see a funeral procession coming down the road, I personally stop my car because it's just something that I was taught to do and I still do it because I'm a gentleman and I want to be respectful to the people that are passing and just lost somebody. All right, something else we got to talk about is your phone. All right, not texting, but if you get a phone call when you're in your car and you got all Bluetooth action and somebody else is in the car, like a passenger, you got to give them the professional courtesy of letting the person who called know they're on speaker. I have had situations where people have called me, didn't know my wife was in the car or somebody else, or I have called them and said something first thing that was a little bit not kosher and everybody in the car hears. So for me, what I'll do is, hey man, I'll answer and be like, just so you know, you're on speaker, I'm with my wife or whatever, whatever. Just acknowledge it, be like, hey man, just to let you know you're on speaker, there are other people in the car because you would be amazed at how many times people say things they shouldn't say because they just don't know. So give them the courtesy. Also. Back seat, if you're driving there, don't do it. You know how many people like a backseat driver? Zero. Even though you may think you drive better than your friend, your friend is driving. If you didn't want them to drive, you should drive, period. All right, don't be the guy that is criticizing or don't be the girl that's like, slow down, oh my God, hit it, hit Like, come on, mama, I got this. Next thing we gotta talk about is basically you eating in somebody else's car. Don't do it, like, ever. It's disrespectful, unless you ask, or if you're on a road trip. Like, if you're on a road trip with your boy or your girl or whoever, and it's somebody else's car, and he's like, yo, let's stop for a burger and fries, that's fine. Just make sure that you've got napkins. Just make sure you are super careful not to spill anything. And then, when you're done, right, whether or not it's with a beverage from Starbucks, or a mocha frappuccino, or a pumpkin spice latte, bottle of water, soda, it doesn't matter. Take it out 
the car when you're done and toss it. This, you see this? You see this? If you ever litter, let me just say, let me just, let me just, let me just explain this like you're three years old. Billy, you're a piece of, pay attention when you're at a stoplight. How many times does this happen, right? You're at a stoplight, you're like, yep, now's the time for me to check my phone. And all of a sudden, somebody will honk and you'll be like, okay, got it, right? <laughs> Not that I've ever done that, I'm just saying I can imagine that's how it would happen. Pay attention, because a lot of these lights are on timers. And if you F up the whole system and you're not going when it's your turn to go, all the people behind you that was like number like seven, eight, nine, or 10, they're gonna have to sit through another light. And personally, I think that is ungentlemanly like. And so pay attention. There's time for texting later. The next thing I just wanna mention is drive sober. I know that I mentioned this earlier in the video, or I think I did. I don't really remember because I talked about a lot of things, but there is no excuse to drive drunk or high or anything other than like stone cold ass sober. There's no excuse these days because of the fact that we've got a ride at our fingertips. And even if it costs you 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred dollars, it's much cheaper than a DUI. I promise you. And the last thing I just want to mention when it comes to you being a gentleman, open the door for your visitor or guest and wait for them to get all the way in the car. Make sure they're in, like including like hands and appendages and skirts and everything. And then shut the door. True story. There was this girl. What's up, Lauren? Sorry about the hand. Anyway, I was going out with her. It was a blind date and I was super excited and she gets into the RAV4 and she had her hand up here. I didn't see it. I open the door, she gets in, her hand's still up here and I shut the door and I hear a scream, right? I broke her damn hand. I still made out with her, but the bottom line is you gotta watch out for those fingers. And guys, don't forget, if you want your car to smell sexy as hell, I want you to hit that link, scan that code, use the discount code ALPHAM to get 55% off your first month of Drift.